Hi. This is the first part of a series of two lectures where we show how to generate mathematical expressions using features that are already built into MS Word. We will not need extra software. We will not need an equation editor. All we require is MS Word. The first part covers the code called field codes for the following mathematical expressions. Fractions, such as a over b, and a squared over b squared. Exponents or superscripts, just as for x squared. Subscripts, such as for x sub 2. We'll even throw in raising a subscripted variable to a certain power, such as cubing x sub 4. We will generate radicals, such as the square root of x and a cube root of x, arrays, and matrices. Then we cover the field codes for summations and products, and limits. The second part of this series covers creating shortcut keys and templates for these field codes. To create these expressions, we use what is called a field code. We start a field code by pressing special keys. On a PC, we press Ctrl F9. The equivalent keys on a Mac are Command F9. By pressing these keys, we call up the field code brackets. These brackets aren't the same brackets we get by pressing the actual bracket keys on the keyboard. These are special brackets. For the first example of a mathematical expression, and that is of the fraction a over b, we make sure that the cursor is inside the brackets. We type eq, space, and backslash. The field code of every mathematical expression starts this way. For a fraction, we next type f, of course, f for fraction. Type an open parenthesis, and we start our fraction with the numerator a. Type comma to separate the numerator from the denominator, which happens to be b. Then a closing parenthesis. To view the actual fraction, on a PC, we press Alt F9. On a Mac, it's Option F9. We use these keys to toggle between the field code mode and the math expression mode. Another way to view the math expression is to cut the entire line of code and pasting. To generate a slightly more complicated fraction, such as a squared over b squared, we first have to learn how to create exponents. For exponentiation, we call up the field code brackets again, using the appropriate keys for whichever platform we are using. Type eq, space, backslash, then type s which we suppose is for superscript or subscript. We type backslash, and then we need to indicate if it is a superscript or a subscript we want. Of course, for exponentiation, it's superscript. So we type up. Then we indicate how elevated above the main line the exponent is supposed to be. Let's try 4 for now. So we type 4. We think this means four points up above the main line. We open with a parenthesis and type the exponent, which in our example is 2, and end with a closing parenthesis. We cut the field code and paste. Now, the exponent 2 does not look much like an exponent. That's because we don't have the base for our exponentiation. If it is x squared we want, we type x before the exponent. 
Of course, we could have typed in x first before starting the exponent. For a subscript, we want the character to go down. We press Alt F9 for a PC and Option F9 for a Mac to toggle to the field code mode. We change up to DO for down. Press Alt F9 or Option F9 to toggle to the actual math expression. And we have our subscript. To get an expression like x sub 4 cubed, which has both a superscript and a subscript, type x first. Then we call up the field code brackets. Type eq space backslash s. Okay, this time we don't say up or down. Actually, it would not matter. Open parenthesis. First, type the exponent 3, comma, to separate the superscript from the subscript. Then the subscript 4. Then a closing parenthesis. Cut. And paste to view the math expression. Let us go back to the fraction a squared over b squared. Start with the field code brackets eq space backslash f for fraction open parenthesis a to start the numerator and now we begin the exponent 2. Call the field code brackets again eq space backslash s for superscript backslash up for the exponent 4 to raise the exponent 4 points up open parenthesis 2 for the exponent and then a closing parenthesis now instead of finishing the entire fraction we could cut this exponentiation code line and paste. What do you think? The result is that the exponent 2 is rendered in actual math format. This helps alleviate the clutter because of the number of parentheses and brackets that we use for these lines of code. Now the denominator b squared. Type comma to separate the numerator a squared from the denominator. Type b. And since the exponent is exactly the same as that for a squared, we'll just copy the exponent of a squared and paste it after b. Close with a parenthesis, cut the entire line of code, and paste. Voila, a squared over b squared. Now, notice that there is a little bit of spacing right after a squared and right after b squared in the fraction. There is even spacing after the fraction. The reason why these spaces occur is that Word tends to create spaces within the field code. We toggle to field code mode to get rid of these spaces. We'll simply delete the spacing here. There's also a little bit here. We get rid of that. And this one, that's gone. Toggle back to the math expression mode. Now, that is certainly much better. For radicals, we call up the field code brackets eq space backslash. And then for radical, what should we use? What do you think? Well, r, of course. Open parenthesis. For the plain square root of x, just type x. Then close the parentheses. Cut and paste. And there you go, square root of x. If you want a different root like the cube root of x, we start the radical all the way up to the opening parenthesis. We indicate the cube root by typing 3 right after the opening parenthesis, comma, then x. And then don't forget to close the parentheses. Cut 
and paste. And we have the cube root of x. Typically, the index of a radical is written in a smaller font. We can change the font size for 3 to make it smaller. We toggle to the field code mode, highlight 3, and reduce its font size by pressing the keys Control shift less than We click Shift less than three times, reducing the font size of the index 3, three steps. Then toggle out to the field code mode. Before we can create matrices, it might be a good idea to learn to create arrays first. We call up the field code brackets, type eq space backslash, then a for array. If it's a one column array we want, this would be enough. That is, if we type an opening parenthesis and the entries 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all separated by commas. Then a closing parenthesis, cut and paste, and we have our column array. Without any other specifications within the array field code, the default is an array with a single column. If the array has to have three columns, for example, we need to specify this. To see how we can generate an array with three columns, we toggle to the field code mode. Type backslash after A, type CO for column, and then the column number. In this case, let's set the number of columns to 3. Toggle out of the field code mode, and we have our 2 by 3 array. Word automatically determines where a row starts and ends, based on the number of columns that we specify. To further demonstrate, let's change the number of columns to 2. So instead of three columns, let's say we have two columns. Toggle out of the field code mode, and we have our three by two array. The problem with the array right now is that the two columns are so close together that what is supposed to be an array with two columns can easily be mistaken for an array with a single column of two digit numbers, 12, 34, and 56. We can specify the spacing between the columns by typing after A backslash HS for horizontal spacing. Let's say that we want a spacing of 5 points. Toggle out the field code mode, and the columns are much more clearly delineated. We can do something similar for the spacing between the rows. This time, we use VS let's say a spacing of 10 points, which is quite generous. Okay, this time we have a yawning chasm between the two rows. Let's bring back the vertical spacing to zero. There, that's much better. Now to create a matrix. Call up the field code brackets, eq space backslash b which we think stands for bracket, backslash BC, which we think means brackets on both sides of the matrix, backslash, and then we'll use a square bracket. We can also use parentheses or braces or any other character for that matter. Open parentheses to start the entries of the matrix. This time, we'll just copy the array that we had created earlier and insert it into the bracket field code. Then a final closing parenthesis, cut and paste, and we have our three by two matrix. There is one slight problem with the matrix. The entries are skewed a little bit to the left. There is an option for arrays that we can use to align the entries so that the entries are centered along each column. We go all the way right after A for array. Type backslash and then AC to align the entries along the center of each column. AL will be aligning everything to the left. AR will be aligning everything to the right. Toggle out and we have a much better looking matrix. 
On a final note about matrices and arrays, typing up the field code for matrices and arrays is quite complicated. We strongly recommend associating shortcut keys for the creation of matrices. We start summations and products like we do the other math field codes. The field code brackets, eq space backslash. After the first backslash inside the field code brackets, we type i, which we think stands for integration. We'll talk about integration in a moment. Type backslash su for summation, open parenthesis, the lower limit of the summation, comma, then the upper limit, comma. A space after the comma to provide a gap between the sigma notation and the summand. Then the summand. Don't forget the closing parenthesis. Cut and paste. And we have our summation. For a product, we toggle to field code mode. Instead of typing SU, we type PR. For product, of course. Toggle out to the field code mode, and we have our product. On an added note, we find it easier for editing purposes to have the summand or the multiplicand. Well, that's a word that you don't hear every day. We type the summand or the multiplicand outside the summation or product. To illustrate this, let's toggle to the field code mode. We take out the multiplicand but be sure to leave a space between the comma and the closing parenthesis. Type the multiplicand outside the product field code and toggle out. This way, we do not have to get inside the sum or product field code to change the summand or the multiplicand. Now, regarding the command i, Suppose we leave out SU or PR. Toggle out of the field code mode and voila, an integral. We have to admit that we are not keen about this integral sign and so we have resorted to using the integral sign from a different font. Finally, we deal with limits. We start the mathematics field code. We have a new field code to learn. The new field code is overstripe, so we type O after the backslash. The command overstripe is for superimposing two characters or strings over each other. We will superimpose the string lim with the downscript or subscript x approaches zero. We first type a pair of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we start with LIM. Type a comma. Then we begin the downscript or subscript x approaches zero. So we start the subscript field code. Normally, a subscript will be lowered four points or three points. This time, we lower x approaches zero farther down. So instead of four or three, we lower x approaches 0, 8 points. Again, we type a pair of parentheses within which we type x approaches 0. It is not necessary, but for cosmetic purposes, we get rid of this space. We bring the cursor inside the pair of parentheses, reduce the font size for x approaches 0, 3 steps, by pressing Ctrl Shift less than 3 times. We type X, then we insert the arrow key from the Times Roman font, then the value to which X is approaching. In this case, let's just say it's zero. Cut and paste, and we have our limit notation.